Alright everybody, well here we are, Freightliner Classic XL, we just got done delivering some fuel up. So I've set us up a little map here that we can basically kind of ring around the rosy, get us a good chance to uh, get some crews to talk about some things, but also slow down. So we'll do some upshift and also some downshift with this. I'll kind of explain how some of that works, how the RPM works. Um, so let's go ahead and let's, let's jump into the truck here. Alright, so one of the main things you're going to pay attention to is your RPM gauge. Um, that's kind of going to be your, uh, your best bud in this. So typically in trucks at least for the most part uh depending on how new they are whether or not you know uh, depending on transmissions i mean there's a lot of factors but i'm going to speak generally speaking okay generally speaking ats works on a 500 or at least i'll say 400 rpm to a 250 275 rpm and what i mean by that if you're going from one low to two low it's generally between 350 to 450 rpms is the shift point uh, if you're going half gears, which if you're just going in the split from like, say, one low to one high, typically you're anywhere from 175 to 250. Now, I give those ranges because generally speaking, those are the two RPM ranges. So by I mean, but what I mean by that is uh, 1500 is generally your kind of top. Now, you can see here on our telemetry that 2000 is kind of set as the early red line and 25, 2400 is what they've got on there for actual red line. That's pretty uh, pretty typical and for most of the SES trucks that's actually the way it is which is kind of works out that that dashboard there is pretty doggone close so you do have a clutch here as well now that clutch once it's depressed in there that kind of gets you started then after that you'll see me pull my foot off and pretty much I'll stay on the gas and you guys will be able to see my gas react and also if you're looking once we're cranked up here around your dial on the um the time dial on the left and right sides of the dial um where the your um, rpms are you'll see clutches the bottom blue you'll have a green uh, accelerator on the left and then you'll see a red one for the brake um, so you have all three right in that gauge point which is kind of nice plus you'll have the feet and you should be able to see the shifter over here moving on your bottom left so that's kind of where all our screens are and kind of uh, explain what we got but basically inside of ATS you'll see 1500 as our kind of top of our shift point generally speaking that's about the best way that's about the best uh, trucks don't necessarily care i will say they don't care about horsepower but the torque is more important especially in your lower gears because that's going to, what's going to get you going your horsepower is going to carry you once you actually get going so those two work tandemly together 1500 is kind of the end of where your pulling power starts being um, and then once you get into that new gear you've got a new pull uh, and then that horsepower keeps you up to speed so by saying a 450 or a 375 to 450 shift point what i mean by that is at 1500 rpm you pull your foot off the gas you shift into gear well you'll shift into gear about 425 50 somewhere around in there um, each truck is different so you'll kind of have to learn how to do this within your respective truck i'm pretty good at it with the uh, freightliner i've kind of learned where some of these things are so i'll try to do my best to kind of call out those things as i know them and then we'll see how close we are um, to working and the same goes for the upshift so if you're going or the downshift i should say so if you're at uh 1500 and you downshift well it's gonna be tough you're gonna have to get it down to at least 11 1200 and then pull it out of gear and then you'll rev up the engine get it around about 1500 get it into gear and then kind of like just kind of pad the throttle a little bit so that it'll catch and then you can accelerate and then allow it to kind of pull the truck back along with the e the engine brake all that kind of stuff so let's go let's crank this bad boy up let's get going all right so we've got uh yeah you should be able to see it there on the top of your screen there so we've got a nice little uh ring around the rosy now we're on the sierra nevada map so if you're curious we are on the sierra nevada map we are also um going to be riding around sacramento so if you are asking then there you go and we're also in the freightliner classic xl by mr john ruga all right it's so pretty much i'm gonna try pulling my foot off the uh my foot off here so we get up to about 1500 and see they're right about right at a thousand so that one's a little less this also kind of teaches you a little bit about throttle control um, which is kind of nice it's not fast but it's rhythmic you kind of feel there's a rhythm to each gear change to each shift change Same way flipping the uh, flipping the split or the range over. So now we're back in our five low. You can see how this is running. It's pretty pretty simple. 
now if you wanted to change with the clutch then yeah by all means you certainly can do that all right so we'll go ahead and pull off shift up they go into gear right about 450. this one works on a 350 and a 450 change third gear fifth gear usually 350 everything else a little bit higher so here we go let's downshift All right, so we're clutched back in here, so we'll wait till the light changes. There we go. Clutch out. missed that one a little bit but that's one of those deals where the grind uh helped us kind of not hear that initial grind so all right i hate when the ai does this and you see how i'm kind of pulling my foot off i'm making it a little bit more of a making it a little bit more of a you know caption thing that you can actually see what's going on with my foot there but there we go six low we're cruising now So let's see we're coming up to a turn so here's the thing that this actually um kind of teaches you a little bit this is one of those deals where it, it kind of teaches you how to um control your your descent and speed <laughs> you're braking you're slow up because you know no truck can actually go through um and just completely just you know stop i mean they can stop <laughs> typically the the tires are going to lock up the truck will lock up and it'll just slide the weights is too much so you do have to use utilize the gears to save your brakes that's why you always hear those guys hitting the e-brakes or the engine brake um, you'll hear me hit that jake brake a little bit and that compression uh, will slow the engine down um, it also helps slow the truck down as well as actually going into gears at the higher rpm so that it'll use the truck's own power of the engine uh, to slow the truck up so Let's see, I haven't even depressed. Look at there, Stefan, 2070, I'm not even gonna worry about that. Thank you there for the sub, man. We're doing a video, but thank you there for the sub. <laughs> so once once it gets down to about, so I don't know how it is IRL. Um, once you get into um, once you get into the the like 20 mile an hour range, like I don't even at that point, like I don't even I don't even worry about it. Um, I just go ahead and shift it into neutral and depress the brake because it's hard to get in that second gear and first gear um, without being able to feel it because your RPMs are so low you really can't you really can't hear it and tell it. So I just kind of go into neutral at that point and grab the brake. You can leave the e brake the engine brake on, but typically whenever you do that, it just kind of in ATS it just makes it go you know and then it stops and then you wind up stalling out. So I just go ahead get it in neutral and grab grab the. Uh, grab the foot brake there oh i love this map it's so pretty man love it every time we're in it it's good stuff and it's always good to be paying attention to what you're doing um too many times man if we get uh get up here and get especially on convoy nights and stuff we get started people are always asking why don't you do that convoy night why don't you because it's tough to do it all in convoy i'll be honest with you talk plus you know make sure the guy in front of you not slamming on the brakes it's kind of hard to see and kind of try to do it there you can kind of see it's a little bit a little bit on the challenging side so let's do um if you want to do split now typically this is where people talk about double clutch and going from the going from one split to the next 
a little bit a little bit uh, a little bit harder to do now i do have this on a throttle release on your uh on your your split so notice we're only going 20 miles an hour so i'll go ahead and pull it out here there we go just kind of cruise up here Any day we'll be waiting on the traffic that way. There we go. This is when you'll see those trucks man sit at the thing and you'll see that on front end, man. <laughs> blah 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 just sitting there trying to get off and getting out of that first gear. A little bit smoother than ATS, thank goodness. All right, so we'll do a half split here. You'll see it. You can flip, let off the throttle, goes into the next one. And about 200. So these are all going from uh, low high to low high. You can see we're incrementally stepping up there on our gear. It works the same as your downshifting. five low so i'll keep it in five low once i get there especially unless we're doing like really heavy haul stuff that i need that extra gear to maybe instead of be riding at say 1800 i'm riding at 1500 get a better pull power uh even on the ats transmission it does better especially when you get out on the interstate here we we'll kind of let it roll by the same way And you can see pretty much all of my shift points all happen at 1500 and i usually try to time my downshifts to, to incrementally match up with that so as we're going down i'll get it around a thousand I'll, I'll bump it up to five and then let that now see here's where it differs in a in a real truck um you would have that resistance on the gear as you're downshifting so you'll be able to get the rpm right and then it, you literally feel the stick just slide right in and this one doesn't necessarily do that of course because we don't have force feedback on our shifter so you're kind of guessing so it's why it's really you just need to pick a truck that you really want to do this with. Whatever your favorite truck is to drive, you're like, man, I want to float gears in whatever your modded truck is or your default um, SES truck is. I would say learning the concept was easier on the default SES truck, but honestly, I still had to apply a, a whole different set of, um, you know, I still had to apply a whole different subset of ideas for a Freightliner. Uh, like John Rooter's Highway Killer, totally different. Vipers 389 totally different so every one of them has a certain subset of like um have a certain subset of like uh your gear points and shift points are all a little different depending on you know how the modder did the how he did the mod Alright, so I know we gotta uh, get off this exit right here, so I'm not gonna waste any time. I'll go ahead and start letting my truck start backing down in speed so we don't get up here and get rushed in. Because some of these got a pretty nasty downhill. I think this one goes up though. I think we're going up, up the bridge and over. Come on, come on. Oh, you are gonna let me. Thank you. Looks like we can go down the hill. Probably a stoplight down here, I bet. Yeah. So I'll pull the left foot up on brake just to kind of pad me getting down the hill here. There we go. Not too bad. We I don't think we would have uh, I don't think we would have hit any trees and don't think we would have uh, burned any brake pads up. All right, there's a green light.
I still, especially when I'm doing this, I still kind of reference it sometimes, but some trucks, like especially the Freightliner, I'm just getting used to what it sounds like. I'm getting used to the rhythm of changing gears in it. I'm still I'm still working on practicing getting better on the downshift. Um, because the upshift's pretty easy, but this one is the harder one. You know, especially when you get up a little bit slower, because you gotta react a little faster. Your feet do the opposite. You're used to kind of pushing the clutch in, so I'm gonna go ahead and go for time's sake here. Now you ask, you might ask, well, can you skip a gear? Absolutely. We'll skip it here. We'll go from third all the way to fifth. It's almost like you almost add double. Like double, how about single and a half? That's about what you add. So if you want to go from five below to seven, about 750. So obviously, I mean, nobody would want to do that. But yeah, you, you can, I guess, if you wanted to. Come on, come on. Come on, here she goes. There we go. I mean, honestly, once you once you kind of put some practice behind it, it's really not too hard. And we'll maybe look at a different one here where we got a double clutch and maybe some applications, especially if you like some of the older trucks that you might be able to use double clutch in. They don't really, I don't really think they do too much double clutching in say the the newer trucks. Um, a lot of those are the older older transmissions. A lot of those have a double clutch uh, that you have to do. I'm not sure how that applies or which ones are different. Leave me a comment. Let me know. I'm always up for constructive information from the IRL guys. If you're, uh, you know, an IRL trucker, you're like, yeah, man, it's pretty much, pretty much it. Now, honestly, nobody really cares if they're learning to do the ATS stuff. Nobody really cares how to really do it in a real truck because we can't really apply the real truck physics and the real truck stuff to ATS. I mean, we can, we can at least apply the concept, but we're always up to limitations of what ATS provides for us so but anyway I guess as we kind of close up here and we'll kind of finish up our little loop here um, the main thing is when you start this make sure you got the no more grinds because that'll help build some confidence and being able to get quite so frustrated um, try to keep that foot off the clutch just work on your upshift first work on that part first and then as you get a little bit more comfortable with it then you can uh, kind of add in the um, you can add in the others so There you go. So all the way up to third. It really slows the truck down without having to get into the uh, without having to get into the clutch. So it's kind of kind of nice. And this will work uh, too. I don't know if I really said this or really reiterated this, but it will work on anything. So if you have uh, if you have a Thrustmaster, if you have just a USB H pattern or whatever, it doesn't matter if you have Fanatec, if you have T8HA, if you have the pedals. You can have nice pedals like me, or you can have some G29 pedals. It really doesn't matter. The concept is all the same. It will still work all the same. Uh, so the fancy gear, at least on this point, does not help me in any of my double clutching. I mean, any of my floating, all right? That's just, it is what it is. Like, all you gotta do is get out and practice it. It'll work with any of it. Now, you will not be able to double clutch if you have a controller. Sorry, not double clutch, float. You can't float if you're on a controller. I mean, you can, but it's, it's kind of like pointless to have a clutch and I don't even know how that works with your fingers but yeah at any rate this really only applies if you're uh, if you're doing this through uh, doing this through the uh, having pedals in a shifter so make our last cruise here on uh, Freeport get back into neutral a lot of traffic waiting on us there Yeah, see, I missed that one. So I, I did, in closing, I, I do want to add this to it as I'm looking at this. The higher the RPM that you go, the faster the gear is going to be spinning. And so there, generally speaking, the shift point is going to be closer. So if you go above that, 
and we'll say our average is 400. If you go up past 1500, pretty much everything from 1500 is going to be that that 375 to 450 mark, give or take. If you go up to say 1800, and I don't even know the exact percentage, but it will be a percentage of, of the RPMs that you're losing. The gear is going to be spinning faster, so therefore it's going to spool down faster, which means you get into, you have to get into gear faster, but your shift point is going to be faster. Like So the faster you go, the faster that all that has to happen, which is why if you're doing uh, heavy haul loads and you want to go from one low, one high, two low, two high, like if you want to go through all of the gears, like you've got to do that pretty quick, especially early on, because you're 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 using that thing and, and pulling a lot of pulling power behind it. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're learning that stuff will still apply uh, all the same. So anyway, I'm gonna finish over. We're gonna go pick up a fuel load because um, I love this. We got a brand new fuel taker mod there off of the um, off the Steam Workshop. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope this helps you a little bit. I hope some of the tools here, being able to see the footwork and seeing the telemetry and stuff, kind of helps get you in the in the game here of floating. Always helps to have your shifter stuff on here, um, you know. But still, even if you have a six speed and so, well, I don't have a knob, man. Can I still float gears? Yes. You don't have to float every single gear. It's not a switchy turn on, but it is easier if you have access to be able to maneuvering your range and your split with your hand. But if I had a button here, at least to get you from four low to five low and then get you from five low to five high, it wouldn't really matter. It's the same stuff. So really what you wanna make sure is that you can get through actual shiftable gears in an H pattern shifter. You wanna be able to get through those, um, you know, inside the sim don't worry about the buttons it's not a big deal so anyway that's it for us guys i hope you enjoyed uh we'll see y'all here in the next american truck sim video we'll see you there's a trade horn we'll see you pull it out